Uh, I'd like to be a manly man, but my leg is shaking a little bit, to be honest. As long as you don't feel any dampness down your leg, it's all good. Yeah, no moisture going yet. <laughs> you don't have to post any of this. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to post any of it. Uh, okay, I'm actually moving really slow in the bucket. All right, so uh, today's more uh, progress on the elevator. So Bob is doing some uh, work upstairs. And uh, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of expose the front of the elevator, which uh, I'm really curious what's behind this paneling. And uh, so we have a couple mysteries today. I think I've mentioned in the past that uh, I always love pulling paneling off the walls because on a couple occasions, I have uh, found signs on the wall. So I'm always hoping and crossing my fingers that I find more signs. Uh, uh, and here's that sign. So look at that amazing font. So is that the perfect color? Oh my gosh. You couldn't, you couldn't hope for a better color than that. And then here was another one. This was on the, uh, the actual front door. So uh, two really cool signs. And when I find signs here, they are old. These were from the bathrooms. And... I have uh, one more mystery that we're gonna try to dig into today. And uh, truth be told, I've already kind of solved the mystery, but uh, I'll show you what uh, the, uh, the path that it took me to get there, and I'll show you what, uh, what the mystery is. So this is the actual elevator car, and if uh, I step inside and look up, right through there is where Bob's working at the moment, but... Uh, Here's what I couldn't understand. Sorry about the shadow on the wall. There's no light in here. Uh, here's a hinge. And here's a hinge. And on this side is a hinge. And there's a hinge down there. And so that makes me, I mean, the obvious assumption is that this would be a door and it would swing open. Uh, and in some of the historical photos from the previous video, you can see where they've got that door open and they've got that door open. So at one point back in the day, at least in the 1930s, uh, this elevator shaft had a door that would open on both sides. So the problem is that this whole thing looks original. It doesn't look like it's been disturbed, molested or anything like that, but it is solid angle iron. There's no break in it, and uh, but it has hinges. And how can it be hinged on both sides? <laughs> uh, the other thing is there's a plate that has been uh, put in here. And there's, so I was thinking maybe this thing right here, this curved door, would hinge and open and you could like access something over there. And that was kind of my working hypothesis. But if you notice that plate is over and blocks that. And if that's the case, if it's that door, this thing uh, didn't open and it was permanent. And then why is it that in the old historical photos, this, this section was open? So this cannot be original, it had to be added later, but it is perfectly seamless with the rest. So I'm guessing that this is a later addition, uh, this back wall here, and I want it to open on both sides. So uh, I can't just take that out of there because if the elevator went up, you know, an arm could get sheared off. Uh, so um, I started looking closer and with Bob and David, and I noticed something was pulled out there and something was pulled out there. You can see a little hole and then there and there all the way up. And as it turns out, what they were pulling out was this track that these safety gates slide up and down on. So in order for the elevator to operate, I'm guessing uh, you have to 
lower this cage and that's a safety measure so that uh, you don't get injured when the elevator goes up. But that has been completely removed uh, from, the, uh, from the elevator shaft. And the other reason I know it's true is because you can see a slight stripe there in the corner. That's where this track went. So somebody, for some reason, who, who knows why, maybe it was falling apart or something, but they have removed that all the way up. So there's no way that uh, the elevator can operate as it was intended to. That, that safety gate system is gone. Uh, the tracking is gone. And so that would explain why uh, this back, let me open this up because the, sh the shadow is interfering. That would explain uh, why that's solid angle iron and it's not intended to open. But darn it, it looks like it's original. That's what was throwing me so much. So I was like, how could it be that that doesn't open? It's original, it's never been touched. Look at it, it's the exact same color. So I guess fairly early they made that decision. It had to be after the 1930s because we have the photograph from the 1930s where you can see through the entire elevator shaft and it was open on both sides. So maybe 1940s or 1950s, this was installed and that was uh, removed. Uh, yeah, so a lot of thinking to do there. Anyway, mystery solved. That is a later addition, but still looks pretty cool. Okay, so the other thing I'm hoping to do today, since we are uh, working on the elevator, there's a lot of stuff that I can't do by myself. That I just don't have the skill set or the knowledge to work on. But peeling paneling off is something that is well within my skill set. So what I'm thinking about doing is <clears throat> getting a ladder and just getting busy with the flat bar and start here and peel all this back. I have to step back I'm too close. Uh, starting from there, peel that off around the front over to uh, the other side. So this spring when Neil comes, we're hoping to get the elevator actually moving. And there have been a lot of comments that I'll never be able to get the elevator certified uh, and usable. But the thing is that this is a freight elevator. This is not for people. This is a tool just for moving stuff from one floor to the other. So this will never transport people again. Uh, at least not as long as I own it, because it, it would just require a completely new elevator for that to happen. So, But to lift things to another floor, it's just basically a lift is what it is, not an elevator. So uh, if we can get it operational, uh, it's just going to serve to move all of the stuff that's on the third floor out of the building. It's going to uh, help us move a materials handler up to the third floor because we're going to need that to fix the beam on the uh, the west end. And it's going to help us bring uh, tools. Up. There's Bob. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good to be back in Charleston at the Brown Shoe Company. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having fun. Uh, actually, we did we, we made a lot of progress uh, on the, uh, the, elect, the electric stuff. We're not... The, don't worry, we're not doing work that a licensed electrician has to do, but we uh, we did remove uh, in a demolition capacity the stuff that was interfering. So uh, we've got the place where the electricity comes into the building kind of cleared out. A new new equipment has to be installed there. So, and then actually today I need to call Amron, which is the service provider, and find out what they need because it has to be up to code. So. Yeah, uh, there is that. So I've had uh, a lot of people comment on what they think it's going to cost. It was some estimates as high as like $70,000 just to get wired uh, to the elevator. Uh, hopefully it's not going to cost that much. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what, what, uh, what happens. So anyway, let's get this paneling off and see what's under there. I, I'm really excited to see. Okay, I guess that's a good angle. Let's see what happens. It is so cold. Uh, 
that uh, I have to take these gloves off in order to press the record button. By the time I get the gloves back on, my fingers are frozen, so. Bob uh, nicknamed this uh, ladder the Widowmaker. Uh, can't decide where to put it. I bet this comes off pretty easy, don't you? I would think so. But that's like the that's the mo of this building. Every project you start, it's like that's oh, going to be easy, and then all the way until it isn't. All the way until it isn't. So. <clears throat> Every time I start doing something like this, there's always this drop ceiling trim that has to come off first. I think I'll get safety glasses. I can tell already. We're not plumbed on your head. No. I forgot those were up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I need. Uh, So it looks like they just put up uh, plywood underneath and then there's the plywood. So they had a backer? Yeah, that's what kind of like. Uh, I never know, should I like do time lapse videos or what? <laughs> it depends on the project. Yeah. These five minute projects are probably after time lapse because they take a half a day. Yeah. I, I need to get a good uh, camera that's good for that because. That phone will just fill up the memory real fast, and then. Uh... Come up on the Widowmaker with me, guys. Okay, so here's a, is that a fire alarm? I don't even know what that is. It's got really thin wire power coming to it. Firelight. Um, uh, so one of the tasks in getting the building up to code is gonna be all of the uh, fire alarms, fire suppression, all that stuff. So uh, it's in some ways it's like the electricity, which is like, you kind of got to get some of it out in order to get the proper stuff in. And I don't know if this is usable or not, I don't know. The good thing about the fire stuff is you can dismantle it, put it aside, and if it's usable, you can reuse it. Uh, the electric's a little bit different. Once it kind of comes out, it's, uh, you know, except for the boxes and stuff, but even the boxes, like those cutoff switches and stuff, they're really old and really dangerous looking, and uh, I don't know if that stuff can be reused or not, but, um, I'm gonna take this off and because oddly, it's seated on the outside of the paneling. So I guess it was paneled first and then this was installed later. So uh, the good thing is it's just a flathead screw. So I'll clip that wire and uh, there's no power to any of this. It's been completely tested. So no, uh, no electrocution going on, but uh, yeah, I'll pull that off. And then I guess there's nothing stopping me from peeling this panel back. The only thing that's stopping me is uh, the uh, <laughs> the epic quest of looking around the building for a flathead screwdriver. So, what do you know? Here's one right here. So, uh, actually, the last few days, uh, David and Bob have been helping me. Um, it's incredible having other people here to work with. So there's so many benefits. There's somebody to talk to, somebody to joke with, to laugh with. Uh, and they all have their own sets of tools. So uh, whenever we need something, somebody, oh, I got that right here. And uh, having three people, it's uh, bigger than the sum of its parts. So you'd think that it would multiply the speed of doing stuff by three. But it actually multiplies by like, I think four or five, which is really awesome. Uh, a breath of fresh air because when I'm here by myself, it is so slow, so slow. And then there's the uh, the factor also that uh, these guys know what they're doing. So 
uh, that's a huge upside as well. Oh no, is it too big? Oh no, it works. That's one of those fancy, fancy ones, ratcheting ones. That is really weird. Look how sharp that flathead screwdriver is. I don't know if I can get it in focus. That is thin head there, but not thin enough for that guy. So I'm gonna go look for another one. Uh, I know what I need. I need like a butter knife. That's the perfect, don't laugh. You know, you've used a butter knife to get a screw out before. Uh, nope. There's a tiny little screwdriver. Hopefully that will work. All right. Let's try this again. Man, that's, that, even that little tiny screwdriver is almost too big for that screw head. That's weird, I've never seen that before. Okay, there it is. <sighs> There's the perfect place for it. Uh, now it's time to do the paneling, but don't get too excited because I want to pull that paneling off and there's probably still plywood underneath it, so. champion of leaving heavy tools on the top of ladders? Yes, yes. <laughs> you fell in a league of your own? Yeah. Oh, there's a cavity here. Uh, nothing too exciting, just a brick. Okay, so we can see the uh, original paint again, which is nice, but no signs yet, sadly. And because that door is like a two-piece door there, there's definitely no signs under that part. So it's not looking very optimistic at the moment for signs. <sighs> wondering if that's going to come off in one piece or not so we'll find out here pretty soon yeah she's not giving up the ghost too easy not making it easy on us no it isn't <laughs> this plywood is different it's a redwood of some kind Definitely more resilient than the other stuff. Absolutely.
Okay, so we got the front is exposed and it looks pretty awesome. Uh, there's one problem that uh, one of the chains that comes down in this chain guard here has broken. So that'll have to be pulled off and fixed somehow. Uh, but that looks so much better than that ugly paneling. So uh, we're just going to go ahead, like I said at the beginning of the video, and, and go to there, pull that back. The only problem is that this door is screwed onto the outside. So I gotta remove this door. Then we'll pull it out and I'll put the door back on. And uh, I'll count that as a big win for today. Okay. Couple passes with a power washer, that's gonna look amazing. So. Okay, yeah. None of this old stuff works. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> so, look at that old fuse box. Isn't that something else? Let's see here. Wood heel department. Wow, that's great. It's got like the actual departments. That one's scribbled out. North ceiling. South ceiling, wing. Machines. Toilet. I guess that's... They had an interesting way of flushing the toilet back in the day, I guess. Cool. That's, look at all that copper wire in there. Careful before you're stepping. All right. Yeah, boards with nails in them. It's a really cool old ceramic light socket. It says Hubble on it. And uh, so we're thinking while well, Bob is still wrapping up upstairs why not capitalize on our momentum and uh down here is a uh, a little wall it's just basically a stick built wall and i think it was installed here just to restrict traffic for some reason maybe they had something going on on the other side and then something on this side uh but while we're at it we got the log chain maybe we could just put it up there and Give it a yank and be rid of that too, why not? So open this place up a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna be embarrassing for sure because I don't think I have enough muscles to throw it over the wall. What do you know? Think we'll be able to yank it? I think so. If one person can do it. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull the truck in here or something. Yeah, that's not even budging. Alright, so one step forward, two steps back. I think I've only got like 16 gigabytes of memory on that phone. <laughs> easier than we thought I think so
move the or the I just called this light an elevator. <laughs> Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's about to go. You guys need a hand? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Okay, so that does it. Uh, this looks so much better now. Uh, and I, I, I typically go through here with a cart, and now I don't have to worry about those double doors or anything, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, let's just take one more look at this elevator. No signs, sadly, but we got a pretty cool switch there. Some old ceramic plugs. Here's a really neat old switch here and uh, there's still a chance once we pull this material off here that we find a cool sign so yeah look at that look how awesome that is call bell only authorized personnel are permitted to operate this elevator Okay, so we are uh, playing with the bucket truck. I don't know how tall the bucket truck is, so we're gonna pull it around to the front of the building and extend it all the way up, and we're hoping that we're able to work on the third floor window sills. Uh, let's find out. Uh, okay, so here we are. The, uh, the distance to the third sill in the front of the building is uh, actually lower than the distance to the third sill in the back of the building, if that makes sense. So the gap between the bottom of the first window is less in the front and around back, the property basically kind of goes down. So on the back of the building, there's an extra like five feet or four feet, uh, making a huge difference. But uh, yeah. And this basket, like when you park it down, it bounces. Or when it, it uh, hits full extension, it bounces and the truck wobbles. So uh, it's pretty scary, it's terrifying. Uh, we'll show you how bad it bounces in a minute. And there's no outriggers on this thing. So the truck like wobbles. And uh, I'm gonna try to go up in it today, but I'm not gonna pretend. I'm, I have a feeling I'm gonna chicken out about halfway up, so. <laughs> so I guess the uh, thing now is start the motor up and just raise the bucket and see how high it goes. Then we can experiment with terrorizing me. Hmm. And uh, okay. It's a lot more fun to watch you go up in it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to go up in it too? Just for the fun of it? I, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> David? Uh, my, it, I exceed the weight rating? Or my <laughs> weight exceeds the rating. He okay. said it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, he exceeds it. That works. <laughs> if you're over 250, that's, that's over an eighth of a ton. Yeah. All right. Let me get it started. David automatically exceeded. <laughs> All right. So I learned something today. When you start a diesel, you gotta 
turn the key and let the battery charge it a little bit. Bob showed me that. And it starts. So okay, take it out of gear, engage. This is what was confusing us last time because we pulled this up to engage the PTO and nothing happened, but apparently you have to give it an extra pull to get it all the way up and now it should be working. So I'm hoping I'm not in gear. Okay. Parking brake is on. Let's go see. Now when you do it, you're gonna have to release the bucket because when you watch it go up right now, the bucket's gonna go like this. Oh, okay. Is that, that's probably what that lever yeah, right there is for. Lever on the side is. So do you do that before you climb in or once you're in it? Once you're in it. Okay. There we go. Yeah, those stairs could interfere with the arm, yeah. See that bounce and that wobble? That's the terrifying part. And once it gets up high, the whole truck wobbles. I think you're gonna get to those sills. Wow. Oh my gosh, it could even go high enough to work on the top part of those third floor windows, yeah? Still going up. Okay, that settles that. So there's enough room left over that we can actually work on the sills all the way around the building because it's up now, but we still got all that extra height we can do. Oh man, that thing is so wonky. Yeah. I don't know if it translates to the video, but that whole thing shakes. There is no way I can do that. Look how the damn thing is wobbling. <laughs> so fully extended, you can work on the third floor, at least around yeah. the, uh, it's just the west end of the building that's the problem. What do you think? So, it's pretty cool, but that thing was wobbling, man. Yes, I would not want to be on there. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know, man. Okay, I, I guess I'll try it. We'll see. Whoops, oh. there's a building there. Bucket hit the building. This is full extension. Can't okay, let me step away and get a, a shot of it fully extended so we can see the height. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, up to the third floor, halfway up the window. So that's actually pretty good, which means all of that can be worked on pretty much. And all the front and around that side. Like I said, the back end of the building, the ground is lower. So, but I think it's not, I think, even with that lower back end, it's still gonna be high enough to work on the window sills all the way around the building, which is really cool. Because when we initially bought it, I was thinking, well, at least it'll get me to the second floor. And uh, it might turn out that we can actually do the third floor. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big sissy. Bob said he'd do it first, so. Uh, I am gonna force myself to do it, so. Uh, but it'll be good if he goes up because we can show you how much the truck and the bucket wobble the whole thing. So uh, he's going to go up first and then then I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm 
be able to get out of this. There should be a door into those things, yeah? Should be. Okay, you see it over on the right? Yeah. Are you gonna raise yourself or do you want David? No, I'm gonna raise it. Okay. Yeah. Trust issues. Pull the trigger and then lift out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unfold. Yeah. So this is twice as uh, scary because we don't know how it even works. <laughs> Ooh, that diesel's smoking. All right, I'm gonna start paying attention to him so we can figure it out and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we gotta figure it out. Question is how high he's gonna go before he gives up. You take it real slow, it doesn't bounce as bad, yeah? Man, that thing is smoking. Be very, okay, ease off of it, yeah? That's not gonna be a problem for me. <laughs> that is terrifying just looking at him do that. I am a sissy, oh my gosh. I need to believe so. I say that's a success. High enough to work on the third window sill. <laughs> I'm scared for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is probably boring to watch on YouTube, but I am biting my nails right now. My, my leg's almost shaking. I think probably though once you get used to it and you've had a couple wobbles and like you get your sea legs I guess, right? I would say. Yeah. But it'll do the window sills all around the building. Yeah. That's the best part, right? Wow, he's pretty good at it already. Wow, all right. So, and it, it'll probably take you up to about halfway up that window if you maxed it out, right? Probably. Yeah. So, sweet. I mean, just be pushing. Do that again. So look how that's wobbling. He's just by a little pressure with his hand there. I mean, as long as you get used to the shake. Yeah. So he's got some expert advice. Just ginger, very gingerly on the controls. You're not in a hurry. Oh, that's no problem. Just take, <laughs> take your time, slow movements. Don't crank it in. If you just barely give it the control, it'll slowly move. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, don't film me trying to get my fat butt out of this thing because that is not going to be pretty. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll spare everybody that. Thank you. <laughs> Filming for insurance purposes. Yeah. <laughs> the less the insurance company sees, the better. <laughs> so, that might not be the best strategy. All right. Well, I got to go because I... I gotta do it because I'm gonna be assisting if I don't. <laughs> Very slow. Very slow. Very slow. And pay just attention to what I'm doing, not where I'm going. Yep, yep. Don't worry about the ground. Just pay attention to your bucket and uh, your controls. Are you saying I'm going to the ground? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know if I can climb with a phone, so sorry guys. Okay, so I'm already like eight or nine feet up in the air and I gotta climb over into this plastic bucket, so. There's no pretty way to get in. 
I'm at the <laughs> I think I'm stuck. I think that's the end. <laughs> We're at a bad start. I, I, hold on. All right, there's a harness loop here. How's that open? You gotta flip that little back lever and then flip the big lever. Put your thumb on that one. You got it? Oh yeah, okay. So. All right. Okay, so when you're in one of these, here's like a little joystick thing. And it's got a trigger, which is a dead man switch. So nothing happens unless you have that compressed. And then you basically got all these different uh, positions that'll make you move. So uh, pulling up is going to raise, it's going to unfold it. Squeeze the handle and pull straight up. And that's going to raise this first boom. Raises the bucket? Yeah, just your bucket. Okay. And, and then, then whenever you, you push it. in, then that raises the bottom. You got to pull back. Okay. You pull back on the handle, and then this one will go up. Okay, so let me just try to move something and see what happens. Okay. Let's see here. Straight up. Oh, uh, that is a lot of bounce. Just go easy. Okay, hold on. That is so much bounce. Oh my gosh. But you're, you're stopping. Don't just easy and just keep moving. Okay. It doesn't bounce until you stop. All right. So I'm at the second window cell, and I just informed them that I am not going any further. <laughs> okay, Chris? Yeah. Squeeze your handle, pull back and get this to clear. Uh huh. And then just try your rotation. Don't go any higher. Just try your right and left rotation on your pistol grip. Okay. But All don't right. rotate until, until you until clear this. Lift okay, so I have to go up at least another foot. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'd like to be a manly man, but my leg is shaking a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> as long as you don't feel any dampness down your leg, it's all good. Yeah, no moisture going yet. <laughs> you don't have to post any of this. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to post any of it. Uh, okay, I'm actually moving really slow in the bucket. All right. So I, I do know that uh, work being a lineman is not a career for me, that's for sure. All right, so I was able to unfold that one. And now this rotation is not too bad. So, okay, I've got the basics of it. And uh, there's the second floor. I prefer to be on the other side of that window right there. Okay, so we're going around to the other side of the building to see if uh, if we can get a, a cool uh, thumbnail shot being up in the bucket or whatever. So, guys, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That is terrifying to me. So, I know some of you can relate. Some of the people watching this can relate. Other people are like, what's the big deal? But uh, it was a first time, and uh, they're assuring me that if I continue to do it and I continue to go up, I start to get used to it, uh, get my sea legs, so to speak. But I feel like I could comfortably work on the second floor 
window sills all the way around. It's going up from there that uh, is making me weak in the knees. So, all right. Let me drive around here and see if we can get this picture. Okay, so the good thing is that uh, the second time going up was less scary than the first time. So we were just thinking that um, by the time I do the second floor windows all the way around the building, I'll be kind of used to it. And then maybe I'll be okay going up to the third floor. So, uh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Bob said that we got to check the filter on there because it might be screaming for air and can't breathe and that's why it's doing that so we'll see okay so now that the uh paralyzing fear segment of the video is done uh we're back in here and we are gonna uh, finish taking off all of these uh slat boards here i don't know what what are these things called i guess they're just who knows what they're called? Anyway, they're coming off except for this section right here where I'm gonna hang some artwork. And the rest of them are all coming off. So then I guess we should sweep this place out once again. You see this, Bob? So this is the room that we power washed, if you remember from an earlier video. And uh, maybe that moisture caused a little more peeling. I don't know. It's galvanized metal. That does yeah, not being open to the elements isn't helping us. Yeah, that's right too. So it's going to take another power wash. Maybe scrape it first. Some people suggested different chemicals you can wipe on, but I don't want to do that. That would be a little bit too much. So, okay, we got a flat bar and a claw hammer and Let's see if we can get to town. Choose your weapons. This goes so much faster with three people than... I mean, that's obvious, right? Oh, no, uh, David, David, that section right there, we're gonna leave for that hanging uh, piece of artwork. Including this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like nine feet long, so... Getting the conduit down, huh? Yeah, it was well. It's not doing much anymore. Yeah. It doesn't go anywhere, it just Yeah. There's just a section up there. Right there. Yeah. This is one of the mildest winters that I can remember. And uh, as you can tell this is the next morning. The sun is out shining, but uh, it's really cold. And I'm here back at it while Bob and David are at home in their home movie theaters under a bunch of blankets. And uh, the wrap up is up to me. So let's go inside. Okay, see all that stuff on the floor? Gotta clean that up because if you recall last, late last fall, we uh, did a power washing in here and it got rid of a whole bunch of the loose stuff. As a matter of fact, on the roof, it did a great job. So, uh, that being said, we spray painted the walls and, you know, a few months later more is coming off. So I don't know what that means. It might mean that all of that paint has to come off, uh, which is okay because that's a pretty good look too. But it has, it has trouble bonding with this tin and I think that's why it's going to be constantly peeling. So we're going to have to figure out what to do with that. Um, so... The glass in the windows is missing. I don't know. See that? This is my dragon breath. Uh, <laughs> it's so cold in here. Uh, but I do want to get all of this swept up and uh, cleaned out. 
So I'm going to get busy. I got my mask and I'm just going to sweep it up. Yesterday we were able to get 90% of all of those wood slats off of the wall. So there's just a little bit more up there, a little bit of ladder work. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with that. But we, um, we left this little section right here because that's where I'm going to uh, put that artwork. And then I'll use the multi-tool to come in underneath it and knock the rest of that off. We did leave the baseboard because when we pour the uh, level, click, uh, level quick uh, as a new floor, uh, it's recommended to have a baseboard. And then there'll be a little bit of foam there for expansion and contraction. So uh, that's why we didn't remove the, the baseboard. Uh, so I'm going to get this all swept out, and then I've got one more little uh, project to show you guys. Well, not a project, but uh, I have some work to do up there. So... Okay, so down just a couple piles and then vacuum around the perimeter of the room, and I think we're good to go. Uh, now, Bob mentioned something really cool, which I hadn't considered. So that door is really narrow, if you can see there. Uh, this is like a standard door, but it's still kind of on the narrow side. And uh, yeah, so we were thinking, or he, you know, he proposed that we just remove this door and widen this out and get a set of uh, double industrial doors. And because uh, he had seen something on Facebook Marketplace, it was kind of industrial, but it had like glass panes in it and it was really cool. So uh, I love that idea, I think, because bringing the furniture in here that'll be in here at some point, uh, I'll need a wider opening to get that in. Uh, and then I'm, I'm also moving forward, look how cold it is. Uh, I'm also moving forward with uh, collecting my antiques and stuff that I eventually want to send someday uh, here. And uh, I'll have a little update about that uh, coming soon, but I could get some really old, heavy doors, like even some that are as old as the United States, because uh, this country is, you know, just a couple hundred years old. Uh, those doors would be older, if you can believe it or not. Uh, really big, heavy ones. And uh, I can throw those in the, uh, the shipping container with the other antiques, and we can put them right there. Or who knows, maybe I'll find something locally. Uh, that remains to be seen, but uh, we'll open that door. And uh, yeah, I wanted to show you one last thing uh, before we go. So if you remember several videos ago, I had a video called like 10 headaches or something like that. It's like 10 of the biggest problems that I have uh, in the building. So uh, one of those problems was just above that window. And I don't know if you can see it there, but right at the very top, the brickwork has kind of uh, fallen in and there's no uh, actual windowsill above it. So I have to get a, a professional mason to come in and lay those bricks uh, and restore that. But because of the leaking, since there is no windowsill there, these joists, these are uh, like full, these are the old school tight grain, 120 year old boards. Uh, they're Douglas fir and they're the, the full dimensional wood. So it's like an actual full two inches. And uh, right here at the very end where the window was leaking, let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, hold on a second, I got gloves on, so. Uh, right there, I can't focus on it. Um, those joists, take my word for it. <laughs> it's so cold the camera doesn't want to function right. Uh, these joists right here, they have, uh, due to the moisture that's coming in right there, they've kind of rotted out. So. They sat on that steel plate and are actually bricks that were mortared into that steel plate. And then those, those two by sixes sat. So there's one, two of them at the very end uh, have kind of rotted. So what I need to do is find some other two by twelves that match and uh, put them alongside those and put some carriage bolts or something. Because once we get back about seven inches, they're perfect. Those are dry, clean perfectly good. It's just that, that rain coming in right there has uh, deteriorated them. So the good thing is, 
Yesterday, I was kicking around uh, here, uh, and I looked down, and what do you know? Isn't that awesome? Those are actually original to the building, and I have no idea where they came from because none of them are missing. Uh, I looked up at the roof, and if you see that brown one, that's been a replacement. So it's possible that those came from up there, and then they cut off the uh, the part of the board that needed replacing. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, isn't that awesome? I've got the material to replace that. So it's a little bit cold right now, and that's going to require being up on a ladder, and you know, there's snow on the ground and that stuff. So that's going to be a project for uh, for April but uh, I have what it takes. So uh, I can just join them right there with those, put like a whole bunch of carriage bolts through them and uh, they will be solid as a rock. So, I mean, they're actually nothing sagging or anything. So, uh, it, cause I think they're sitting on that two by, yeah, they're sitting on that two by six still. With, so uh, there's no sag in the floor or anything like that. So really all I need to do Let's just put them up beside, carriage bolt them, and they're good. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is, I have the, uh, the cities coming out on next Wednesday, and I wanna ask them the process of permitting, because up until now, I've only been doing two things that, require, that uh, don't require permits. Uh, that's just cleaning all the garbage out and doing demolition, and neither of those require uh, permits. Other than window work, that kind of thing, doesn't require permits. But some of this stuff, like that's a little bit structural. Uh, I have kind of an idea that I want to run by them, which will really move my process forward a lot. And uh, so that'll be an important meeting. But one of the things I want to ask is, can I uh, make a, uh, a long list of the projects that I need to do? Uh, and just get kind of like an approval to go along and check off all of those things on that list. So, because it would be, you know, a way more money every time filing a permit to do something. But if I did a single list of everything that I'm wanting to do, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, that would be one filing, I guess. I don't know how it works. So, uh, that's going to be a question for when they get here. So, okay, that's it for today. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being with me. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.